THC tent, uh, but I'm a resident of Toronto. And as the saying goes, we are our brothers and sisters keepers. I deputed for the first time here in October at a TCHC board meeting, and I said that I'd noticed some striking differences between uh, TCHC meetings and those of other city agencies and groups that I've observed. For example, the TCHC meetings weren't being posted on TMMIS. TMMIS is the website that lists the times and dates of the meetings of city agencies and groups. I'm happy that the TCHC board meetings are now listed on TMMIS. That's largely due, I think, to the advocacy of Kathy Nelson, the new CEO and president of TCHC. <coughs> And other important changes have been made to the TCHC website. For example, the reports and other materials from the board meetings are available via just a click of the, or two of the mouse. And Ms. Milson let me know uh, about this in a November 4th email. She also noted in that email that there is now a board report archive. And that was taken down a couple of years ago, and I guess it's back up now. But you wrote in that November 4th email that you tested the link the day before on November 3rd, it wasn't working and I tried it yesterday, it's still not working. So something's going on there and it's a problem and it's kind of inexcusable after all this time. I also mentioned in my October deputation that the people watching the TCHC meetings via video find, were finding it really hard to hear most of what, was, what goes on. Unfortunately, that also has been, the sound system has been augmented, so that's great. And the fact that these changes have been made shows that Ms. Milsom is sincere and is getting cooperation from others in the organization in making changes. That's why I was shocked when I realized there's still no information on the TCHC website about what email address to use to submit a request to depute. That should be easy, as easy or easier than the changes that have already been made to the website. So for people watching this video off-site, to sign up for a deputation, you send an email to charmaine.zena at torontohousing.ca. That's C-H-A-R-M as in mother, A-I-N as in Nancy, E dot Z-I-N as in Nancy, A at torontohousing.ca. Moving on. I was even more shocked when Kathy told me the email two days ago that the video of today's board meeting will not be viewable after the meeting. And she didn't give me next, any explanation. And just before this meeting, I talked to Robert Fredrickson, and he said he's been pushing for this, and others have been pushing for this for years. And Kathy and I spoke on the phone on November 9th, and we talked amiably about all the th items I brought up in my October deputation. But with respect to videos of the meeting, she said, quote, we have to walk before we, we can run, unquote. She also said she'd raise it with the board. But in fact, it isn't mentioned in any of the materials for today's meeting. I happen to know that it's really easy to make the archive videos publicly accessible. So not having the archive videos publicly viewable has nothing to do with the TCHC's infamously outdated computer systems. It has to do with the lack of will of the board and of the management of the TCHC. And that's shocking, because the TCHC's materials tout uh, how it's following best practices and is tenant-centric. For example, online it states, we are accountable for our actions, accept responsibility for our performance, and share the results of our work in an open, honest, and transparent manner. So that begs the question, why won't you let people view the videos after the meetings? What are you hiding? What are you afraid of? You're dealing with matters concerning more than 150,000 TCHC tenants. Most aren't able to tune in at the exact time the meetings are happening. You know that. You also know that the meetings themselves are held at times and a place that are hard for all but a very few TCHC tenants to come to in person. So not making them accessible in any form except minutes, which I've heard are very selective, is a scandal. And archive videos must, so the archive videos must be made publicly accessible immediately. There's no excuse not to. And there's one other matter I'd like to bring up, and Miguel mentioned this as well as he mentioned videos, and it has to do with it also has to do with making a focus on tenants in reality and not just a PR slogan. There should be more than two seats for tenants on the TCHC board. Yeah! This is underscored by the fact that one of the tenant reps on the TCHC board has been absent from meetings since about April. That's eight months. And there's no, been no discussion of whether it's okay, whether he's coming back, or instead, Jeez. whether another tenant should be taking his place. Jeez. I'm speaking, of course, of Robert Carlo. It's my understanding that he's alive and well. So if he is, he should be here now. He's on the phone! My phone! 
Um, he is on the phone. Okay, I didn't know that. So he's coming. This is his first meeting back. This first meeting back. Okay, so that's good. So otherwise, it's and it should, shouldn't take eight months for somebody to replace this this one great tenant rep. But for leave it to eight months to have another person. That's for uh, it. Just doesn't jive with the sloganeering about being tenant centric. Thank you.